great chef Anthony Bourdain once said, when you sit down with people and just say, hey, what do you like to eat? People will tell you extraordinary stories, mostly nothing to do with food. That's because what you love to eat has more to do with your memories, your thoughts and feelings, and your experiences and stories than it has to do with anything on the plate. This is called sensation transference. Now, we all create sensation transference. It connects us to things we love, especially things we love to eat. And I want you to remember this because food and beverage companies also create sensation transference to connect us to their products. How do I know? I create sensation transference. We all do, except I do it for a living. I am a graphic designer. And for almost 40 years, I've been designing everything from annual reports to information graphics to large-scale display. But my true love is designing food packaging. Yes, I work for food and beverage companies. But my real customer is you. And I want you to know how we design sensation transference to catch your eye, how we hijack your stories to romance you. I want you to be part of this romance. Right now, I'm involved with your subconscious. And quite frankly, subconscious you could be a lot choosier about what you are picking up at the grocery store. <laughs> now, we are going to talk about that. But first, let's talk more about food. What do you like to eat? What is your comfort food? For me, it is apple crisp. And the best part about it is how it smells coming out of the oven. The crumbly oats and the caramelized apple take me right back to my Bubba's kitchen. And that makes me happy. My Bubba was warm and soft and usually dusted over in flour. And she spoke just one word of English. It was the only word she needed. Eat, eat, eat! Whatever your comfort food is, imagine it in front of you right now. Is it something sweet? Something savory? And if it's savory, is it covered in cheese? Whatever it is, like Baba says, eat. Now, you probably never wonder about why you love it. But in the back of your head, just like my story of Baba and Apple Crisp, you have a story, a memory, or a feeling that connects you to that food. Somewhere along the line, you created sensation transference, and you locked in this positive connection. Food and beverage companies know this, and they create sensation transference too. They tell you brand stories, which are kind of like your stories, only with products woven in. Now, a brand might borrow my story about Bubba, and they might say, why does Bubba's apple crisp taste so good? Apples from the tree, butter from her cows, or old-fashioned oats, part of the family since 1945. Subconscious you just made a snap decision. If you smiled or liked that story even a little bit, your subconscious said yes to the whole thing, including old-fashioned oats. And just like that, the company connected that product to you using sensation transference. And while they were at it, they built in a little familiarity and trust. Should you trust them? Well, in the past, you trusted brands, no questions asked. They brought you the convenience of packaged foods and all kinds of new choices. And in turn, you gave them loyalty and trust. When they said spaghetti in a tin, good food for your family, you bought it and you loved it. And then you changed. Food culture became popular culture, and you became a lot more savvy about what you eat. You still like convenience and choice, but now you're looking for real healthy food. You're looking for an ingredients list you can pronounce. You want to know where your food comes from and how it's made. And this is a good thing. Food and beverage companies, though, are now scrambling to keep up with you. To keep the love alive, they tell you promises. They promise you everything you're looking for. 
and your subconscious is quite interested in these promises. But food supply chains are long, complex webs. They stretch worldwide, and they are hard to manage. Food and beverage companies also struggle sometimes to keep their promises. Working on it, absolutely yes. Delivering, not always. So how do you avoid the bad romance? Ask yourself a question. What is it about your food that really matters to you? Are you looking for fresh and local? Maybe you're looking for less packaging, more chocolate, best price. You decide. And instead of letting your subconscious be seduced by a story, make choices based on values that matter to you. And you will find that there are lots of new brands, smaller brands, and local brands that are keeping their promises. When you fall for a new brand on your terms, you create the sensation transference instead of the other way around. OK, now you have fine-tuned your food values. You know what's important to you. And you are standing in the gateway to the grocery aisles. And it's a good thing you're prepared, because in the aisles, there are 40,000 different items to choose from. Now, what if every one of those items was packed into the same brown box? Black writing. What if the cookies looked exactly like the crackers and the crackers looked exactly like the coffee filters? You would have to read every package to figure out what you were looking at. This would be exhausting, and I'm pretty sure you're not interested in spending that much time in the grocery store. And this is where I've got you covered. Well-designed packaging tells you at a glance you found what you're looking for. Packaging narrows your choices quickly by design. And sometimes we do such a good job that the packaging becomes the product. You think you're buying what's in the box, but subconscious you is totally buying the box. We have a client that makes one sweet food item. And sometimes that item is put in a box, and I've designed a label with a mousse on it, and it's a sweet treat for kids. Sometimes the same item is packed into a tin. And I have wrapped that tin with beautiful cream-colored paper. It's textured. And we use metallic ink. And now, this is a gourmet gift item. And you will pay more for it. And you're not paying more for what's in the tin. You're paying more for the added value that the packaging brings. And it does bring value. Moose label wouldn't make that impressive a gift for your boss or somebody special unless your boss and somebody special is a seven-year-old. One of the most important tools a designer uses is color. We know that cream colors and metallic ink give the perception of luxury. And now you know that, too. We also know that if you're looking for something healthy or organic, your eye is going to pick up on everything that's green. And when you have picked up the one, ask yourself a question. Does green on the box mean that there's something healthy in the box? Is this soup organic or just designed to look organic? How do you know? The truth? It's always on the back of the package. The ingredients list, the nutrition fact, proof of all claims. If we say it's organic on the front, we have to prove this to you on the back. Sugar-free. Turn that box over and find out what is sweetening that product. Less salt. Less than what? You'll find out on the back. You'll also find out who made that product, where it was made, and how you can get in touch with them. The front of the package is designed to narrow your choices and, yes, romance you. But the truth, it's always on the flip side. Now, when you have the right color and the right packaging, you've got a powerful combination. In the 1950s, a researcher was asked to find out why consumers were shunning margarine. Now, he suspected the problem might be color. And some of you might know this. In the 1950s, margarine was white. To test his color theory, he set up a series of luncheons. And beside the bread, he served a pat of butter and a pat of margarine but he switched the colors. The butter was white, and the margarine was yellow. 
At the end of the meal, he invited comments on the food. And he did not prompt anybody about butter or margarine, yet 97% said they did not like the taste of the butter. They said it tasted oily. They much preferred the taste of the yellow pat, the margarine in disguise. They said it tasted like butter. Margarine became yellow. And at the same time, they elevated its packaging. They shaped it into a brick, like butter, and wrapped it in gold foil. They gave it a prestigious name and a crown for a logo. And on the package, they could state truthfully, tastes like butter. Incredibly, until 2005, margarine outsold butter two to one. That is crazy sensation transference. And here's something that's also kind of crazy. Today, margarine is enjoying a comeback. They've cleaned up their act, they've reinvented themselves a little, and now we know them by their new name, vegan butter. Sometimes, sensations are wrapped up in a much larger package. Has anybody here ever visited a winery? Yeah, that experience starts the minute you step out of your car and you wander under the grapevine arbors. You're always happy, you're with friends. And when you step into the tasting room, you are treated to a beautiful and fragrant environment. Individual attention insider stories about wine in the perfect glass at just the right temperature and you drink it all in and the wine tastes unforgettable until you get home and then you look at that case of wine you just bought and you ask yourself this question why did this wine taste so much better at the winery it's happened to you hasn't it it's because wineries do a great job of creating sensation transference. It is a full experience. Everything you saw, everything you heard, and everything you smelled influenced what you tasted, and you thought it was the Pinot Noir. This is the magic of sensation transference. Now, the good news is we can all create this magic. Take the case of wine. Remember everything you loved about the winery. The grapevine arbor, the ambiance in the tasting room, the people you were with, and the stories you heard. And like magic, the wine will come alive again. Savor sensation transference. It's all around you, and it is OK to enjoy it. It's even better when you can share it. Recently, my well-traveled nephew came to a family dinner with a bottle of wine, and he said to me, this is the wine I was drinking in South America, and when I found it here, I wanted to share it with you. I remember nothing about that wine except how much I loved it. Now, he didn't set out to create sensation transference. He simply included me in his story, and I felt so special. Sensation transference works because we crave these positive connections to our food and wine. Now, I am certain when you leave here later today, you're heading straight for the wine store, I mean, the grocery store. And all I'm asking you to do is choose products based on values that matter to you. When you fall for a new brand on your terms, you create the sensation transference. And when you've picked up the one, read the back of the package. The truth is always on the flip side. And while you're there, Take in the sensation transference. Take it in and take it with you. Incorporate it in your own life. Like the winery, you can create experiences that start the moment your guests come through the door. What they hear, what they see, and what they smell will influence what they taste. This can be as simple as a warm hug at the door, the smell of coffee brewing, and maybe some apple crisp coming out of the oven or as extravagant as the white linen, the good dishes on a picnic table at the beach. Make it memorable and you won't have to worry about the food. Everything will taste amazing, maybe even better than it actually is. You have the magic ingredient. You've always had it and it is 
OK to use it. Sensation transference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> <laughs>